Till now, in this lecture series, we have been studying about finite state machines and pushdown automata. We have studied about these two machines and we have also seen the class of languages they accept. And now, as we move one step ahead, we are going to study about the next topic, which is Turing machine. So, if you remember, in the very first lecture of this lecture series, this was the diagram we had where we discussed what were the topics that we are going to cover in this lecture series. And if you see, we have already studied about finite state machines and pushed on automata. And in finite state machines, we have seen that the class of languages accepted by them is known as the regular languages. And then in pushed on automata, the class of languages that was accepted by them was the context-free languages. So we saw the limitations of finite state machines and we saw how its limitations were overcome by pushdown automata because it is more powerful than finite state machines. And now as we move one step ahead, we are going to study about Turing machine which is more powerful than finite state machines and also more powerful than the pushdown automata. And the class of languages that is accepted by the Turing machines is known as recursively enumerable languages, which we will be discussing in detail as we proceed further in this module of Turing machine. Now let us see what were the data structures that we had in finite state machines and pushdown automata. And let's see what is the kind of data structure that we will have in Turing machines. So if you remember, in case of our finite state machines, which accepted the regular languages, the data structure that we had was only the input string. We just had an input string and we had a control which can move only to one direction and that is forward. So we saw the finite state machines and we saw that they had a very limited power and also a very limited memory. And the class of languages accepted by finite state machines are the regular languages and we already saw what are those regular languages. And coming to pushdown automata, in pushdown automata, the data structure that we had was the input string and apart from the input string, we had a stack. So what made the pushdown automata different from finite state machine was the presence of a stack. So because of the presence of this stack, we saw that the pushdown automata was more powerful than finite state machines and then the class of languages that they accept which is known as the context free languages are a higher class of languages as compared to regular languages. So this is the diagram which represents that we had the input string and also the stack which added more power to the pushdown automata making it different from the finite state machines. Now coming down we have the Turing machines which we are going to discuss in this lecture and in Turing machine the data structure that we have is something known as a tape. So a tape is something that looks like this as it is shown in this diagram. So we see that the tape is a sequence of infinite symbols. It is an infinite sequence and over here we have something known as a tape head. So the tape head is positioned on the symbol on which the current control is present and then the tape head it can either move one step to the left or one step to the right depending on the kind of computation that we have and then here we have the input symbols and as I told you this is an infinite sequence so the input symbols that we have they are filled into these cells and then the remaining cells instead of leaving them just blank we fill them with a special kind of symbol that is known as the blank symbol. And if you see here, we have the tape alphabets, which is represented by sigma. You know, sigma is used to represent the input symbols. We have been studying this from the beginning of this lecture series. And the tape alphabets, it can contain 0, 1, A, B, or any kind of symbols like this. And then as I told you, the blank symbol is a special symbol. And something you need to note is that the blank symbol, it does not belong to sigma. That means the blank symbol is not a part of the tape alphabets or it is not a part of the input symbol. But what is it? It is just a special symbol that is used to fill the infinite tape. So as we are having an infinite tape, the blank or the empty cells are filled with this special symbol known as the blank symbol represented by this. So this is the basic data structure that we 
have in our Turing machine. So the main thing that you need to remember is that the tape is an infinite sequence and then the tape head is the position where the current control is present and then the empty cells are filled in by a special symbol known as the blank symbol. Now let us look at the initial configuration of a Turing machine. So if we have a Turing machine, the initial configuration of the tape, it looks something like this. So here as I told you, we have the input strings represented by these symbols over here and then the empty cells, it is filled by these symbols known as the blank symbols. So it blanks out to infinity. And then we have the tape head which is positioned on the leftmost end at the starting. And now let us see what are the operations that we can have on the tape. So these are the operations that we can have on our tape. So the first one is read or scan symbol below the tape head. So as I told you this tape head represents the position at which our current control is present. So you can always either read or write only that symbol which is present exactly below the tape head. So if you are having your tape head over here, you can read or scan the symbol which is exactly below the tape head. And then the second operation that you can perform is update or write a symbol below the tape head. So again we have to see where is our tape head and then the symbol below the tape head can be updated. That means for example we have A over here, this A can be updated that means it can be overwritten by some other symbol, let's say B. So we can replace this A with B or anything else depending on the input symbols that we have. So you can either read the symbol below the tape head or you can write a symbol below the tape head. And then the other operation that you can perform is move the tape head one step left and move the tape head one step right. So you can either move the tape head one step to the left or one step to the right. So remember that you cannot move more than one steps but only one step you can move either to the left or to the right. So those are the operations that you can perform on the tape of a Turing machine. So this was just a basic introduction and in the next lecture we will be seeing more about the introduction to this Turing machine and we will see the rules of operations that we can perform on the tape of the Turing machine. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture where we will be seeing more about the introduction.